Next one, focus. Uh, traditional focus on profitability. Uh, next generation focus on disruption of pre-existing activities. That's a temporary thing. Open. Uh, whether we talk about open source, open data, open hardware doesn't really matter. Uh, traditional, think about it as cost reduction. These companies think of it as a weapon. Um, and by open, I do mean it can be open activities, it can be open data, it can be open practices. The effect of open is always the same. It drives evolution. It does so through increasing adoption and increasing collaboration, hence certainty. Now, when you compare traditional versus Web 2.0 companies, what you find is there's very little difference between companies in terms of their consumption of open. Everybody consumes like open source or open data. But when it comes to competing against others and using open as a way of manipulating markets, then there's a huge polar difference between traditional and Web 2.0. Uh, next are practices, so traditional very much scaling M plus one disaster recovery test. Uh, that next generation distributed systems designed for failure are chaos engines. Um, chaos engines are where you randomly introduce failure into your production environment to ensure that it's actually resilient. So that's hiring somebody to run around your data center, randomly switching off machines, pulling out cables, or in the case of uh, Amazon, uh, they have a chat called, uh, well, they have a master of disaster. Uh, used, to, used to be a chap called Jesse Robbins, and he was so good at this, he actually ran into one data center, unplugged an entire rack, and sold it to somebody else before anyone could get down there. Um, you, you have to build your systems to cope with failure. That's what they do. Learning. Uh, we tend to use analysts. Um, they tend to use ecosystems. This is an important one. So we take your online shop. Um, your online shop, massive different components. Where do you focus? Well, we like to focus, you know, uh, one size fits all. Um, so we can either focus on the chaotic side, which we call often innovation, uh, the transitional side, which is about customer, uh, customer focus, uh, or linear, which is about efficiency. And so we end up with these books which tell us, you know, do one. Innovation, customer focus, or efficiency. Well, that's great, but there's a danger here. And this is the danger. If you look at somebody like Amazon, what they do is they take infrastructure, they make it more of a utility. They provide that online, and they enable an ecosystem of other companies to grow up around it. Those companies, um, they've reduced the cost of failure of innovation for them by providing infrastructure as a utility, which encourages them to innovate. As those innovate innovations diffuse, you can spot the pattern by leveraging that ecosystem to see how things are spreading. You can then commoditize those activities to new component services. So what happens is they commoditize infrastructure to more of a utility. People build big data systems on top of it. That diffuses. They introduce Elastic Map Reduce. People grow on top of that. This enables these companies to appear to be highly innovative, uh, highly efficient, and highly customer focused all at the same time. By the use of ecosystems, all three of those things grow as the ecosystem grows. So the old models that we used to think were right are busted. Uh, last difference is about um, the use of infrastructure. Uh, we generally tend to use enterprise class. Uh, these players all use commodity. Now these practices, like former practices, the American system, the Web 2.0, Fordism, are likely to diffuse and spread. So you're more likely to become like them over time. So quick recap, there is a process of fusion, but there's also a process of evolution from genesis to more utility, creates a cycle of change. Um, as a result of that cycle of change, we are always forced to keep up because of efficiency, agility, new sources of work. We often have inertia to that because of past success, past practices, which create three different economic states, peace, war, and growth. In the war state, it's the most interesting one, and the one we're in today in IT, it has these effects. Disruption, adoption concerns, new entrants, new practices, rapid growth, explosions of data. Now these occur at local ecosystems that are also at a macroeconomic scale, and every time we go through the war, you also get the introduction of new organizations. And that's what's happening today. New types of companies. So there's the traditional, and these are, well, you can call them the new Fords if you wish. And that's what's appearing. 
they, in the wild, we have those three different types. We have traditional, which are pretty similar to Web 2.0. We've been learning those who survived the last war. Uh, but there is now this next generation. They don't use one size fits all. They break things down into small components, like two pizza model. They use open as a way of manipulating markets. And they build ecosystems, which enable them to appear to be highly innovative, customer focused, and efficient simultaneously, all at the same time. Now, I'm just concerned because we were overrunning beforehand. You sure? Because we can stop there if you wish. OK, so in which case, I'm going to quickly shoot through strategy. And what do I mean by strategy? Well, for me, strategy is understanding your value chain, understanding what the threats are, what the barriers to entry, and using open source and ecosystems to manipulate this. So what do I mean by that? For example, take Google. Google has a data value chain, which iOS Apple was a threat to. So what did they do? They released Android. They basically commoditized that area, created, put Apple in competition with an entire ecosystem of man uh, hardware manufacturers in order to protect app Google's data value chain. If you look at somebody like uh, Facebook, they did the Open Compute Project. The Open Compute Project is about increasing efficiency in data centers, but it's also about reducing barrier of entries into other people's businesses, particularly their competitors. Um, there's a number of banks who are worried about possibly this scenario, the Bank of Google. And so they know that payment systems are commoditizing. So one bank for the last three years has built Bank as a Cloud, which it's now selling to another bank. And it's likely to spread that even further. Uh, again, its intention is to build an ecosystem, enable people to build on top of it, commoditize its market before somebody else does, does it to it. Uh, two other banks have thought, well, hang on, we can actually uh, extend our relationship with our customers by commoditizing something else of value to them. And a big fat industry is financial ERP. And in the same way that Amazon, a retailer, commoditized hosting, they're exactly plotting to do the same to the likes of SAP and Oracle. Uh, another one is, um, it's uh, government departments, um, the Veterans Association, Department of Defense, they spend huge amounts on healthcare, electronic healthcare record systems. So they've open sourced this all under a project known as CIRA. Their idea is to provide an ecosystem or build an ecosystem, more utility providers, encourage innovation, reduce their costs. A couple of insurance companies have looked at that and said, well, hang on. That's a potentially new revenue stream for us, and it will provide us new data, which can improve our algori algorithms, which we use for medical insurance. These sorts of games are going on all over the place. So much earlier this year, I, I took about 160-odd companies and plotted level of strategic play against the use of open as a uh, mechanism of competing. And these, this is a population graph, size of the bubbles, the size of the population. Traditional company, uh, those who call themselves more Web 2.0. Eh? What we find is there's a whole bunch of companies who are highly strategic. Um, they understand value chain, and uh, they use open as a way of competing. So they've got great situational awareness, and they act upon it. They use open source, they use ecosystems, they manipulate markets. And they treat IT as a weapon, and they're doing rather well. Now, there's the thinkers. These companies think strategically, uh, but don't use open. They're doing OK, uh, generally stagnating, not too bad. Uh, believers who don't think strategically, uh, but uh, are open by default, uh, they're mainly irrelevant, uh, not doing so well. And then the chances who don't think strategically and don't use open, and a lot of traditional companies are in that bucket, uh, they're doing pretty poorly. Uh, the best examples uh, are slightly declining. Uh, some of them are much worse. They have strategy. Don't get me wrong. They have huge, great big strategy documents. Uh, but when you take out purchasing decisions like Oracle and SAP and implementation details and operational details and tactical choices, the amount of real strategy they have is relatively small. And it often boils down to do what the business says, which is not a good space to be because Cloud is all about the shift from products and rental services to utility. It's as Meg Whitman is creating that war in IT, which is going to have all these impacts, new entrants, new data, rapid growth, new practices, et cetera. And we've got this new generation of organization that's appeared. And they use these new techniques and new methods. And some of them are small, but some of them have market caps of 100 billion. They are big. They are players. 
They think very strategically. They use open as a way of manipulating markets. They have great situational awareness of value chains. They act upon this. They build ecosystems. They use open source to manipulate the market. They use IT as a weapon. And your defense is going to be, do what the business says. That's the difference between some companies will survive the war and some companies won't. Now, I often hear people say, but we're not a technology company. Um, these games are being played now in insurance, in banking, uh, within technologies companies, within healthcare, within governments as well. Um, software is literally eating the world. If you look at somebody like the UK government, uh, for example, digital first policy, support for open standards, support for SMEs, uh, heavy use of open source, uh, G Cloud transparency, uh, open data initiative, these aren't accidental things. And if you are one of the very few who managed to survive this, uh, don't worry, because next up is commoditization of the manufacturing process through 3D printing and printed electronics, and that's going to have exactly the same impacts. And that's already started as well. Uh, this was a blueprint to let anyone 3D print an open source gun at home. Um, so this stuff is spreading. It probably won't hit us mainly for about five to eight years, um, but it's getting there. So today, rapid cycle of change, more evolved competitors, manipulation of value chains, tools, heavily use of ecosystems, and also IT and open as a weapon. Now, my name's Simon Wardley, I work for the LEF. The LEF is a research organization. Uh, we work on business IT strategy, business relationship management, consumerization of IT. Uh, my focus is over here, it's about organizing IT for the future, and more specifically, how companies compete. Um, and we also work on the changing nature of work. Uh, thank you very much.